Yeah, hello friends, this is your friend Alan Josh and I welcome you to this channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of things I believe is going to be of immense help to you. And especially if you are just venturing into cryptocurrency like many people, you know, the cryptocurrency is becoming, uh, the space is now booming so much and a lot of people are seeing the potentials in it. Maybe you have seen some hypes on social media, on Twitter, or maybe on WhatsApp statuses on it. You think you're missing out on a lot of things so you want to jump in and start making money but a lot of times the stories tends to be different from what you expected because um, money making is not as simple as you think and you hope to get lucky but um, the chance of you getting that lucky is very very slim so you don't want to just start out and hop into anything there's a lot you just need to know and if you base all you know all your your decision making on what you hear from twitter and then um, maybe social media me from a lot of people that are very very loud out there you are likely to get it wrong you are likely to respond in either of two ways either you run away because it appears more like the typical Ponzi scheme or you it fuels your desperation and your greed and then you jump in and make poor decisions so you have to be very very careful and be very very um, very very careful and cautious so one of the things you should just know is when it comes to money making anywhere be it cryptocurrency or anyway, learning should precede any. And when you try to end before you learn, you often fall prey to very catastrophic losses. So you, and you don't want to be there. So you want to pay attention to learning first. And don't think you are missing out by giving time to learn. If you think you are missing out, you want to jump in, you are going to, instead of taking the time to learn, you're going to lose more and more money. So it's better you pay attention to learning. And one thing I can assure you is why I don't believe there is anything in this physical space that is permanent especially in technology new innovations come every now and then and replace the old so someday i believe something might come to replace the blockchain technology or cryptocurrency but uh, you know our children uh, might come with some other things that eventually replace these but uh with the look of things this is likely to you know be a, be around for for a very long time at least throughout our own generation and, and that of our children so it doesn't matter so you have a whole lot of time to learn and then and then take advantage of the space and I know it's a bull season right now there's a lot of money to be made but you won't go around trying to learn first before you earn you will certainly grow on be, by trying to earn before you learn so that's one of the very important things you should know so as a new being in this space apart from that you should understand that you don't want to just swallow up every pieces of information you get from the social media maybe, maybe you go to you know twitter and you see a lot of hypes there you want to base your decision there there's a lot of noise on the social media i mean on twitter and then for newbie to be able to you know get the best from it so you want to be very careful with the information you get from social media you know there's <laughs> there was some time ago somebody came to me and said he wants to buy dogecoin he had not been in crypto in cryptocurrency and the first thing he wanted to buy was doge and that point in time was when doge was being hyped online and it was around 40 cents you know at the peak price because the loud the sound was loudest then and i often tell people in the financial space be it cryptocurrency forex or anything that way anywhere where money is being traded actively you know for a newbie it's more attractive to put your money or there when it, you should be running and it looks most disgusting when you should be coming close that's how it often looks when you are new in the space things look more attractive when you should be running and then they look more um, more disgusting when you should actually be you know be taking advantage of the situation so when you see the hype is so loud you don't want you want to be very very careful because very likely you're going to get burned so be very careful with social media and i'm not saying that of course where else will you get your information if you don't go to twitter or youtube or wherever or uh, website those are places where you get your information from eventually but you should pay the price of learning so that you know exactly what you're looking for and when you have the right knowledge base then you are able to see how the noise you see from social media and then be able to take advantage of relevant piece of information in the midst of the very vast array of pieces of uh, pieces of information that are being shared online so be very careful with how you use social media as a newbie don't be driven by the noises out there be very very careful so that's one thing you should know i think i've shared two things already learn before you end learn before you end so very important importantly you learn before you end and then be very careful with what you see on social media and the next thing you should know is that all cryptocurrencies are not same okay that's one of the mistakes that people make people who are outside of the space you know you hear a lot of hypes on uh, about one cryptocurrency and then or about cryptocurrency generally you've heard some sometimes some bad things about crypto or some good things about crypto and you think that's all there is to cryptocurrency 
you know the cryptocurrency space is very vast right now last time i checked on coin market cap there were over 8,000 cryptocurrency listed there so i believe right now it should be over 10,000 already and those are the ones listed on coin market cap there are many unofficial ones that are not listed on coin market cap so there are thousands of you know they perform different purposes i mean different functions rather they serve different uh, functions and uh, they are not all same so that's something you should understand and when you have this understanding it should it will guide your decision making okay like i often tell people now bitcoin has popularized the blockchain technology but the, but the blockchain technology is something way bigger than bitcoin it can be used for anything so many cryptocurrencies have been built on this blockchain and they have different functions take for example bitcoin being the boss of this space is a pure store value and it's being a mode of transaction why it is becoming less effective as a mode of transaction because of the increased transaction fee we have now relative to many other cryptocurrencies that are very cheap or more cheaper to use as means of transaction it still reserves its role as a store of value just like good is in the traditional world okay and then you have ethereum that is performing a very very amazing function in being a, a blockchain solution where many decentralized apps or many softwares can be built on it in a decentralized manner so ethereum is serving that purpose and then um, you have in that particular ecosystem you have ethereum as being the currency of that ecosystem and then so when you have ethereum when you want to patronize a service on the ethereum blockchain you will need ethereum to perform functions on the next or to be able to patronize the service maybe you want to deploy a particular uh, project on the ethereum blockchain you need ethereum to to patronize the service so to carry out any transaction whatsoever on the ethereum blockchain you will need the ethereum um, coin to perform the transaction so there is a demand for this coin primarily because the blockchain solves a real life problem okay and then and then by this demand as the demand increases of course the value of the token increase so as more and more demand there are for the ethereum blockchain the demand for the ethereum um, coin used for carrying out services on the ethereum blockchain will increase recently i read the news um, where visa card in 10 at the later part of the year that they are going to start um, making the card compatible with USDC. USDC is a stable coin pegged against the dollar. So one USDT is equivalent to one US dollar and then so in essence when you're using the USDT is as good as you're using dollar so but it's more efficient because it's more efficient for cross-border transactions it's faster and it's cheaper than the traditional system of using the banking system and this usdc is built on the ethereum blockchain so it's solving a real life problem and in order to use transmit usd across the ethereum blockchain ethereum has to be used as a gas um, as as a fuel or a gas fee like we call it okay and then as ethereum is being patronized there is more demand for ethereum so ethereum is going to appreciate that's something that solves a real life problem that might be a, a little abstract for a, a newbie in this space but i'm going to try to look for a project that everyone can relate with um okay one that really comes to mind now is theta t-h-e-t-a you can search it online on coin market cap theta is just like an equivalent of um of youtube on the blockchain so just like you have YouTube for a live streaming session, you have Theta on the blockchain. But the advantage of what the blockchain offers is usually the advantage of decentralization. Unlike uh, YouTube where you have a centralized platform where YouTube or Google or uh, whoever the owner of the platform is, if they think there's any content that is not compatible with their values, I mean, for example, maybe they, there is a regulation against one religious, um, a religious um, bias or maybe... A political view that is against that of that which the owners of the platform it's a private platform if there's a view that's against that of the owners of the pl platform they can pull down your video for example because it's a centralized platform and they have absolute control but in a decentralized platform like theta it has to take a consensus of every participant in the network in order to make that kind of decision and it's almost practically impos impossible in the long run when there are so many participants in the network it is it becomes impossible to um, to make an individual decision without the consensus of all every participant which is usually very difficult to to get so a decentralized system offers immutability and it makes it possible for people to have almost absolute control over the contents that they put in that platform so a lot of people are tripping towards decentralization because of the advantage of of privacy and the advantage of absolute control that's what bitcoin offers for example where 
If you own a Bitcoin, nobody can take it from you unless you release your sensitive details like a password and the likes. No government can force anybody or except for centralized platforms like Binance. More on that in some other videos. I think I share the uh, what makes this one speculable. But fundamentally, Bitcoin is, is built on the blockchain that is decentralized and then you can have absolute control over your, your item. So, uh, on Twitter, on Twitter, for example, the, the, the currency using when you patronize a service, maybe you want to pay for the service of Theta as a platform, use T Fuel, for example, and then use Theta as more like a token, more a, a governance token for the platform. Just like um, you have shares for a company, you have Theta token as more like the shares of that project. I will just explain more on that when I finish with this last project, um, which I'm going to use as an example, like Filecoin. Filecoin or storage, there is storage, S-T-O-R-G. And some of that storage platforms on the decentralized blockchain, for example, they perform functions that are similar to what you have Amazon Web Services performing, or maybe rendering a cloud um, computing service, for example. But it's a centralized platform, and you are subject to their regulations or are subject to the decision making of the platform. For example, if for any reason they think they don't want your product on their platform again, they can take you out. And sometimes, if possible, possibly it can be hacked down and then that single point can be hacked and then the content that are stored in that particular cloud can be compromised. But in a platform like Firecoin, which is a decentralized platform, where all the nodes involved in the network are participating in the storage service, there can't be any single point of failure because in order to take out or manipulate the contents in this platform, you have to, you have to be able to, you know, um, tamper with all the nodes in the platform. So this decentralization and having the governance and the storage service decentralized across various nodes in the platform makes it more secured and less um, prone to censorship and less prone to a single person just manipulating stuff or, so, uh, you know, dealing with you. For whatsoever reason so basically there are many uh, cryptocurrencies that are just tokens so this storage i was talking about they have a token called the storage or they prefer to call it storage okay so for these particular projects for example they solve real life problems and just like you have in the traditional world you have a company prov providing a service or providing certain products they have shares that they are lot so that people can invest in their company by buying the shares you are investing in the company and you are partaking in ownership of the firm Okay, and um, that way you can earn dividends when the share appreciates. So as the company succeeds, the uh, the value of the share appreciates, and when it appreciates, you earn returns. Okay, by apart from earning return on your shares, you can sell the share at a higher rate than you bought it. And when people see that these shares are appreciating, some just come not because they're interested in investing in the company or for whatsoever reason. They just want to buy the shares because they believe it's going to appreciate so much longer later. So the value of the shares can start appreciating because people are now demanding for the shares, not because the company, not just because the company is improving. So the same way on the blockchain, instead of having shares, the many of these projects run their tokens on the blockchain. And it has two advantages majorly because they don't have to list it on the National Stock Exchange where there are many requirements you have to meet before you can be listed there and people can have access to, I mean the public can have access to it. Unlike that, on the blockchain, even if you're a small project or a small company, you can run your token in the blockchain and you not only have access to a few people like or the people in that country like you have in the National Stock Exchange of any country, you have access to a global community or anybody anywhere can can buy the token and invest in your business so like some of these projects i mentioned the tokens peculiar to those projects or peculiar to those ecosystems can can be can be a run on the blockchain so anybody can have access to this all over the world and by buying the token you have a stake in that company and then as the company succeeds the token will appreciate okay but eventually as the token appreciates it gets the attention of a lot of people and people come to buy the token and not because they're interested in you know, patronizing the service that Ethereum offers or the service that um, storage offers or Theta offers. They don't. They might not be interested in the service that it offers. They might not be interested in patronizing the service or using it for buying anything on the platforms. But by just holding it because they see that it appreciates. So eventually, it goes from the utility or the primary reason why the token exists in the first place to be 
a speculative instrument. And that's how it is with all financial instruments. Eventually, it starts with something of value and then eventually becomes uh, people buy for speculative purposes. So that is something unavoidable. So these are some of the things that are happening in crypto space. Why, unlike some of these projects that are very solid and have really, really like use cases, there are some other ones that are just pure Ponzi scheme run on the blockchain and people just um, buying and selling and you know pumping and dumping one on one another. Recently, you must have heard of the Safe Moon um, token or whatever it is, and then it started pumping. And it actually made a lot of people millionaires, and then and then because people tripped towards it because of how it was marketed, and it has a lot of communities around. But it's a Ponzi scheme. But I do hope that the founders are smart enough because they now have a huge amount of followership and they can actually start building good utility into the token. Even if they didn't have that in mind right from scratch, it's something they can leverage upon and start building some good utility into the token so that you know they can build something of value. Eventually, it can become sustainable. But primarily, if you look at the whole structure, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's founded on nothing and people just pump and dump on one another and then funds just go. Uh, I'm not going to know that in a way that is not so sustainable, in a way that is not so safe. So, not all cryptocurrencies are same. There are different cryptocurrencies that are offering real life um, values, and some other ones are based on nothing. And then you can put your money whichever, you can put your money whichever you have your decision to make. But when you have an understanding of some of this, and some other things that you would get to understand when you go through some of the videos I share of this. On this channel you'll be able to make better decision in in, um, in your crypto journey so basically those are some of the things I intend sharing with you and um, if at all you want to pay the price to learn more which I advise that before you venture into this thing try to pay attention to learning more and more but if I thought you want want to go ahead to learn some more but one thing you should have at the back of mind do not trade futures if you hear anywhere they mention futures trading as a newbie don't go there don't patronize futures trading even if you have been around for quite some time of course for people who have been around for a year or two i don't think i have so much to say you should have known enough so if you have succeeded in sports trading which i believe which i recommend that you stick to as a newbie stick to just sports trading and if you've been around for like a year or two and you've succeeded in sports trading and you have some profit you can decide to start um learning how to trade futures trading and putting some of your funds in futures trading and then but if you have not been succeeding in of course, post trading you shouldn't even patronize futures at all because you're going to lose more. So even if you don't understand what future is, I'm going to share uh, shed some more light on it in subsequent videos. But wherever you hear futures trading as a newbie, run away. Don't patronize it. Don't test run it. Don't try it at all. Stick to spot trading. Buy a coin, wait for it to pump, and then sell. That's simple spot trading. Okay. But much beyond all the things I've said so far, there is a lot to learn, and you should be ready to pay the price of learning why we how we offer some paid courses in academy and then but fortunately presently we're offering it free to anyone right now but one of the challenges we have faced in the past is you know everyone who paid for the course offered a course and went through everything and took it seriously but everyone whom we give free of charge every single one none of them finish the course because usually what you don't pay for you don't pay attention and you know and uh, I've become skeptical about offering this thing free of charge to people, but eventually people don't still want to pay for it and they, they wouldn't take it free of charge. But I have a lot of people in my private contact that eventually fall prey to all these losses around there. It's quite painful because I've been there. I've been there and I know how it feels to lose so, so much in this space. And it's something I do not want a lot of people to, to you know, to undergo. And that's, that's a very, very strong passion in my heart. So, um, the... We have opened it free of charge to people, but we want to ensure that people don't take it for granted. And so we have some terms and conditions surrounding it. And basically it means you're going to have to uh, put down a commitment fee before you start the class. And when you are done, we refund you your fund, your money. And then that you can actually, you can of course use that as more like your startup capital. So it's as free as that. But if you refuse to finish the class within the stipulated period, that means you forfeit that privilege of getting a refund so if you wouldn't take the class seriously then you have to pay for it but if you would take the class seriously and you know finish it up within the stipulated time and it's not you can finish it unless you choose not to finish it within that stipulated period if you choose not to finish it then you have to forfeit the fund but if you will be serious to the class then you get a refund so that way we are able to get your commitment even though we are offering you free of charge otherwise people don't take it seriously so 
that's how it is and if you're interested in um, taking advantage of this offer you can check the description section of this video and um, contact me or contact one of our staff you should see but make sure you contact any of the phone number in the description section of this video you should see somewhere below but make sure you don't it's not at the comment section i didn't say comment section i said description so you can you know a lot of times scammers come and just post um phone numbers at the comment section and tell people to contact them we wouldn't do that or any phone number we would be um putting any detail will be at the description section of this video so check the description section so you can access these free um training sessions that we we're offering at uh, academy and i'm sure it's going to give you a very very good heads up or a good start in this journey and they are very very solid things uh, we offer there so thank you so much if this is your first time of being on this channel do not for forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button then click the notification um it should be somewhere there the notification bell there so that you don't miss out on some of the very or very le relevant or content we'll be sharing on this channel we share a lot of relevant stuff so you don't want to miss out on them so click the subscribe button and hit the notification button so you don't miss out so thank you so much once again my name is alan josh and have a great time